Thank you for joining us here on the Frank Sontag Podcast. We drop every Friday on YouTube and all the usual places, and I'm cracking up because we had a few minutes, yeah, a few minutes before we started rolling. Is this tape digital? We used to say, like, yeah, we still recording. Say rolling. Yeah, rolling. Even though it's digital and everything else. I have two guests. Many of you know Brian Phelps, Trey Calloway, Be Good Humans Podcast, and... Man, here we are. Thank you uh, for inviting me and my partner. Uh, and uh, it, uh, I have to tell you something, please. Oh, God, <laughs> right out of the gate. No, this is a this is a sincere thing. Okay. We'll get to the other stuff in. Yeah. Okay. Right. But uh, uh, when we decided to do a podcast together, and it was decided it was going to be videoed, mm-hmm. uh, that that I immediately just went, oh no, because when we did the show on KLOS. Whenever there was a news camera in there, it absolutely changed the show. Definitely. Uh, the, the dynamic, the, the way we responded, the way I responded, and, mm-hmm. um, and I was really worried about it. And then I came on your show, and that was the first time I had headphones, as I said, sitting in front of a microphone in over 10 years. Um, I forgot the camera was there. Yeah. Uh, I f- because of you and our relationship and how close we are as brothers... I felt safe, and I had a blast. So It was very helpful, actually. I'm going to slip you a 50 later. Yeah, it, was. it really was. Because we had already done three sort of proof-of-concept audio-only episodes, but those of us behind the scenes were sort of talking, not that we were speaking behind your back necessarily, but we were talking behind his back. And, and we were all arriving at the conclusion that, like, it's 2024, this cannot just be audio, we're going to have to have some camera action here. But we were sort of dragging you to that, and then you were instrumental in helping. 100% you were instrumental, so thank you. And thank you for that wonderful time and making me feel so happy and relaxed. I had a blast. So I you should totally annoy him in this show. <laughs> and I'll say this. Yin and Yang. What he's, he's uh, well, he'll say it, but um, as soon as uh, you posted it, uh, Trey listened and he called me and goes, that was great. That was fantastic. Yeah. Frank is a wonderful interviewer. It's true. He listens. He reacts. Uh, he's, he'll go where you want to go. Yeah, I got emotional listening to that. It was lovely. Oh, as as I did yeah, yeah. a number of times. Just yeah. seeing him with a headset on and a microphone, it's like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah. And I and I never cry. I'm stoic. Yes, I'm not one you of those never guys. Cry. Me, I've been looking at him all day long and just sobbing. Yeah, just well, from having to look for at different him. reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. 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 <laughs> so here we are. Mm-hmm. Be good humans podcast. Yeah. Um, Anywhere you want to go, uh, it it drops, launches June 14th. That is correct. A lot of people are excited about it. Ourselves included. Very. Um, how did all of that, you know, how did all that come about? Because that's not something that just happens overnight. Mm. It, no, it, it, it kind of isn't. But I, I'll tell you this. It all kind of started when we first met. I mean, it, it was, it was uh, great. Uh, uh, a number of years ago, Trey was a... A guard in a women's prison, and uh, looks like it. And I was, of course, a. Uh, you can smell it coming. <laughs> I was a freelance conjugal visitor, oh, boy. you know. And so, what was interesting about that and ironic was, hmm. you know, he he was a screw, which they called the guards, yes. you know. And oh. and that's exactly. I mean, I've been called it, worse. That's fine. And that's exactly what I was there for. So, <laughs> so, um, uh, but uh, honestly, we do have a lot in common. We uh, connected immediately. We, um, for instance, we were both homeschooled, which I don't know how you really felt about it, but. For my money, I loved it, and I think it was the goodest thing my parents ever done. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. Linguistic humor. I like that. That's good. <laughs> you don't have to comment on every time. You can just move on. <laughs> I think you give me no Stop choice. Stop stepping on my comedy. I think you give me no choice. Um, yeah, so... And what I do know, mm. because Brian alluded to you a number of years ago, mm-hmm. uh, maybe by name, but I didn't retain your name, but he says, hey, there's this guy... Mm. He's a television writer, Mm -hmm. successful, and I could tell something was percolating because we had talked a little bit about maybe doing something, and and so I knew a little bit about your background, and I'd like to get into more on the podcast today, this one, Mm -hmm. and we can do it now, but... There's a lot, not only, as I said, that goes into it, but dynamics and and playing off each other and all that, Mm -hmm. so... Before I rudely interrupted you, no, no. Uh, look, we got um, we met at a at a 
social events, and we and we get into this in in the first episode of our podcast. So we'll we'll save the bulk of that story, sure, um, for that experience. But you know, we met at uh, in, a, in, a, in a Hollywood event, and um, but it was it was what happened after that that really made us become close friends, I think, and and that cemented this mutual need for us to like do something to create something, right? Um, and, uh, and that came about through a weird series of circumstances, right? So yeah, I'm a television writer and showrunner and uh, been working in the business a while, originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma, came out here for SC film school. Women's right prison on. guard, uh, all that, um, you know, the standard. And, um, but you know, when I came out, uh, as I'm, f uh, I like to irritate him by saying like, Brian, I didn't know a soul when I moved to LA. Brian was the first friend I ever had. He just didn't know it yet because I listened. I arrived in LA at the same time he did. And I listened to him every morning on the radio and was sort of instantly connecting with his brand of comedy, which I, I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but like his brand of comedy uh, spoke to me because A, he is improvisationally one of the funniest people I've ever heard. Wow. But B, his comedy is rooted in kindness. That's right. And I, I don't, I don't mean to, you know, uh, make you uncomfortable. Uh, well, actually, I do love making you uncomfortable. But <laughs> yes. But uh, you could just always tell that, like. And nothing against, like, I, one of my greatest honors in life was meeting Don Rickles, and he insulted me within the first 30 seconds. Oh, that's a me, right? So, like, that was a great honor. career accomplishment, life accomplishment. But that's a different kind of comedy. Brian's comedy was always genuine and punchy and and funny, but also there was an undercurrent of, of kindness for that sure. you could feel through the radio, and I felt as a listener for 25 years. So, Frank, we, uh, we met at that social event, we uh, kind of stayed in contact, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and we just got closer and closer every time, and we just became fast friends, actually. And then I get a call from him, and he goes, I have an offer for you. Mm. I'm starting <laughs> uh, a men's di dinner group mm -hmm. where we're, the thing is, though, once a month, we all meet at a restaurant that was opened before 1985. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. And so all over LA. Yeah. And a lot of us didn't know each other. He put together like eight or nine guys and we didn't know each other. He picked them. It was like picking. So the, he knew the personalities that was just just jail. From yeah. the, the first event, The first, it was at... Uh, this was at uh, Carmine's. Carmine's. On Santa Monica, Century City. This was a carefully curated group. Yeah. And, and it came about for a reason, right? So we have a, a dear mutual friend. This is a, a, a successful actor, director named John Putch. Uh, Putch grew up in Pennsylvania, moved to LA, grew up in Hollywood, but not really. Like he's from Pennsylvania, but his mother was Gene Stapleton, who was Edith Bunker, right? And a million other things. And so he grew up around the business. He and I met, he directed several episodes of television I wrote and a series that I ran, we became fast friends. But he and I went to dinner one night and it was at one of these old restaurants. This group did not yet exist, right? And this is an old French restaurant in the valley that is like a time portal back to 1973. And we had a great dinner and a great time just talking and catching up. And at the end of it, Putch, as we call him, we also call him the lovable curmudgeon, but Putch says at the end of this dinner, uh, we should do this again. We should just start going to historic LA restaurants. And I said, yes, we should. And improvisational spirit yes and we should invite some other guys and he was like well, uh, i don't know because he's the lovable curmudgeon yes. but he was making my point for me which is twofold i was at a point in my life when this dinner happened where i recognized that i was going through a huge amount of personal upheaval my wife was ill it was creating all kinds of challenges for me our kids our marriage all of it and so I was under a huge amount of pressure and really a little bit upside down in my life. Um, so that was happening. I was going through this big transitional phase in my life. And I recognized that a lot of other men that I knew at that time were also going through their own 
issues. Maybe this is common to midlife. I don't know. This is what they write. What's it all about Alfie songs for, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, whether it was marital strife or health issues or empty nesters or career upheaval, whatever it was, every guy I knew was going through some kind of transition. So that was happening, but also I was realizing with the help of people like Putch that like guys really suck when it comes to making new friendships. No doubt about it. We get to a certain right? age. They you get do. to a certain age yeah. and you erroneously convince yourself that if they weren't your friend in middle school or high school, maybe college, that's all you got. Yeah. That's you, you got nothing else to work with. But, uh, and until you put this group together, I didn't know uh, that I that I had room for new friends. I, yeah. I didn't know. I had Dan. I had you. I had a couple of other people, who were my guy friends, were my closest guy friends, and and I was happy, just content. I was perfect. But then when we started hanging out every month, you immediately get sucked into this camaraderie. Yeah. Um, in fact, at Carmine's that first night, I got there a little early, and there was a guy sitting, sitting at the bar, uh, uh, waiting as well. And we just sat down. We started talking, and then we kind of looked at each other like, "Are you here for Trace thing?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Hey, hey, hey! And we just all connected immediately. So it's yeah. We call ourselves the Diners Club. It's got a Z on the end of it for some modicum of cool, okay? because we're anything but. But it's a group of uh, almost exclusively entertainment industry professionals who've all been successful or accomplished things in different realms, but who all have this thing in common. Like, we needed camaraderie. We needed friendship. We were all going through different kinds of transitional phases in our lives. And so, yeah, I immediately, like, I'd met the guy. I loved the guy for a long time before I met him, but I was like, I got to get Brian to this group because we need, I know he'll make us laugh. That'll be great. But I also had this sense that like, like myself and like the rest of these guys, like you were in a place in your life where this would be useful to you. Yeah. Well, and I didn't even know I needed it or I wanted it or I, you know, um, I didn't long for it at all, but uh, I, I can't tell you how much fun it is. And talking about making people laugh, every single one of these guys, every one of them, they're writers, they're producers, actors, they're directors, directors, they're actors, yeah. directors, uh, and, and all very successful. They, they were, every one of them is funny in, in a slightly different way, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, it, you know, I could right now take my phone, we have the diner's thread, yeah. and I could type in uh, goiter, <laughs> okay? <laughs> It would start dinging yeah. the rest of this program. Oh, it's like I, a group of fourteen-year-old girls on their phones, making jokes, doing it, poking fun. Da, 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 da. Uh, and going back to being on your show for the first time, and now that you've been informed about the uh, the Diners Club, these guys, um, our podcast uh, uh, that you were generous enough to do with me, uh, uh, I had a great time. Like I said, and uh, we had laughs. We had a great time. I'm just so proud of just, oh my God, that was wonderful. It felt great to be talking with Frank again. And I, I just felt good about it. The only comment I got, the diners, we had another monthly event uh, very, uh, soon after that. And the only comment I got, and I was ready for like, you guys were great. You guys were wonderful. I got this. What self-defecating? <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, right. that's right. Oh, that's right. In the, that. in the interview, oh, not a lot of help for that. I meant to say self deprecating, and I said self defecate. Yeah. That's the only thing they heard. Wow. The only, there's the first thing you said. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's, uh, you know, uh, I, make, I just misspoke, and that was what they locked on to. Oh, we've been doing this thing, uh, Frank, for six years now, uh, a different restaurant every month, and it's been this great deep dive into LA's culinary history, for one thing. None of these restaurants are necessarily breakthrough in their cuisine, but if you've made it in LA as long as these restaurants have, you're doing something right, right? And so it's a great deep dive into the history, but it's also this recognition that we all have our own history and we're bringing it to the table every month. And the great part of this is, uh, well, one of the many great parts is the restaurants can sometimes be incredible. Uh, that, that home feeling, wonderful service, the owner's still around, and, and the feeling, the food's delicious, and they could just as well be a horrible place, bad service. They leave your plate in front of you when you're finished eating for 15, 20 minutes. And, but no matter what, we laugh our butts off. We, we, I'm, I'm, 
I feel sorry for kind of the people that sat sit around us because <laughs> a couple of glasses of wine or whatever we're drinking, and then we're, then, then we're like uh, this, uh, you know, sales guys like in our sales department at KLO West. <laughs> when they started drinking, they would make this sound. <laughs> yeah, that's Do pretty that. much it, and that's that's what that's we're doing. Pretty much it, and then the, then we I see that the check arrives usually pretty quickly right about then. Right, but yeah, so I mean, so six years of that, but over in, the, in that process, like yeah, we're all getting to know each other as a group, but I'm getting to know him better and better and better, and and and, and yeah, and so this conversation begins because you're also around creative people. Right. And, and we're always talking about what we're working on or what we're doing or what. And, and I just kept thinking, and I think you kept thinking like we should do something together. And then we finally just started talking about it directly. Um, cause you know, a lot of that chemistry we, we could figure out even before we started actually actively doing this, yeah. you know, we were, we could feel that chemistry just at a dinner table. It was the first episode we did we call it basically their proof of proof of concept let's see if a this thing feels good to do yeah and it wasn't videotaped or anything kind of like a practice show yeah yeah uh and we did a real interview with a, a real person once we got to the interview but uh the, it was also and we both never really verbalized this but it was also like how are we at working together we know we, we adore each other we 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 uh you know, respect each other. Uh, we truly like each other. Yeah. But that doesn't always mean you're going to be a, a you know great partners. Right. Uh, that anybody wants to listen to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so after that first episode, I, I literally just went back and I went, okay. Yeah. That went better than it should have. Mm -hmm. We've never worked like this before. So yeah. That went better than we should have. Fantastic. Yeah. Brian Phelps, Trey Calloway, Be Good Humans podcast launches. June 14th, um, and I'm excited to have you both here. That was in the back of my mind as you were sharing the story about the Diners Club and mm -hmm. it, it, developing relationships, camaraderie, uh, getting into depths and all that is one thing. Talking about doing something created together is another thing. But yeah. Until you get on the bike and start pedaling, yeah. you're like, no, well, but obviously. And I was. Honestly, I was. Um, it went from uh, me maybe buying a couple new microphones. I have a studio at my house. Not a studio studio, but like a musical studio. Yeah. And I went to maybe getting a couple of microphones and maybe a new little board. And we'll do this once a week and go in and just... To talk about you know what it's like to be a good human and 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 crack each other up and do comedy sketches or whatever, and uh, then it went from that to oh we're going to videotape it and I already told you mm -hmm. my thoughts on that mm -hmm. which I'm so glad we do now and then it went from that from I have to get a lot of equipment for my studio <laughs> I mean a lot like and for something that you you. It's a mystery. You don't know if it's going to hit. Right, you don't right, know sure, if it's going right. to work. For sure. But luckily, we found this company, and they uh, 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 they have a facility, and it's you'd love it because it's like this, very comfortable, very light, warm. very warm. The, the the guy who runs it is great, and he appear, acts like he likes us. You know, so <laughs> that's um, always important. Yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah, that helps. But yeah, I mean, we kicked ideas around for a little while, and. Uh, and you know, we both made it clear to each other, like if we'll if we'll know it when we get it, right? But then I felt kind of foolish in retrospect, just because it was obvious. It was in front of us the whole time. I just we we were kicking around all different kinds of ideas, and then and then I just went back and thought about like all those years of listening to you, and and those three sage words. Uh. Oh yeah, came out of his mouth at oh, the yeah. end of every episode. That whole notion of be good humans, and and the fact that the world is a little bit dark, just a wee bit of late, and 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 also, uh, I don't know if I'm proud of this, although it's you know put through ki three kids through college, but like I've killed a lot of people, Frank, uh, in the movies and on TV. I've I've I've, writing, yeah. I've added to the uh, to the <laughs> din of that darkness. <laughs> to a so you were all bad guys, or mostly. Well, yeah, we usually catch the bad guys, but even oh, then, like right. I'm still adding to the din, right? So I I have been having this appetite appetite to put some love into the universe mm. and to try and lift people up a little bit and. Um, 
And yeah, and so then it was like, well, this is obvious. This is the ingredients are already here in front of us. So let me ask this because when this is launched, my podcast, yours is about to come out. So people that are watching this or in uh, not real time, is it fair to even ask? It, be Good Humans podcast. Do you have like a, an idea of what it's going to be? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, we are going to. I, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, yet, but uh, when Trey, we were kicking around ideas and went to lunch, and and he goes and then he brought up the Be Good Humans mm -hmm. thing and said we could do this, and I stopped him in the middle of it, and I said, look, I love you. Uh, I see where you're going with this, I think. And let me just say, I'm tot I'd am i be totally into something like this, using that as maybe a backdrop or a mm -hmm. background or uh, a theme way back here. But I don't want it to be maudlin. I don't want it to be saccharine. N nothing wrong with those kind of shows, but I'd just be, number one, really bad at it because I'm silly and, uh, you know, uh, I'm me. And, and he goes, no, 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 that's the thing. You do you. You and, and I'll do me and we'll be funny. Uh, so it's um, funny setting up, setting up, setting up, setting up. And what's interesting about that is it's all to c get to uh, our guest, uh, the subject uh, our guest is going to talk about that week. Yeah. And so you're not going to know why we're talking about Jeeps. Mm -hmm. Do you ever own a Jeep? And, you know, been having fun with that and telling stories, and and you you won't know why we're talking about karaoke. But then we get to the guest, and the guest uh, has done something remarkable on on whatever level. It, you know, it could be global, it, it could be uh, uh, rural, it could be you know, local, but just something that selfless and something wonderful. And we can still, even though it's like, oh, isn't that sweet? We still have a blast with the guests. It's the essence of what I talked about initially. It's like, it's it's comedic, it's funny, and there's an undercurrent of kindness. Yeah. Right? So that is true to the brand that you created and or that you embody. But it's also right in line with what I was hoping to accomplish. Right? Like, I want to entertain people. I, this is like, I call this the, the veterinary school of storytelling. Right? Like, you, you, God forbid, your pet gets sick. You take him to the vet. And the vet gives you the med. And they always say the same thing. Wrap it in a snack. <laughs> That's right. Right? And so, uh, you know, I, we want to entertain people. We want to take them on a little ride. We want to tell them stories that they don't necessarily know where the story is going. But then at a certain point, usually through that interview with some person, different countries, different walks of life, all kinds of different life experiences, but in some interesting, funny, quirky, almost always funny, but all, always heartfelt way, are just trying to make the world a better place. And so that's what we get to, and that becomes the, that's the med. Yeah. That's where it kicks in and gives you the feels, and, and it's been a blast so far. So we do a little interview there, and then we'll wrap it up and do more, you know, uh, fun stuff. And uh, one of the, th I don't, I've never told you this yet. Oh, good. But <laughs> you're, you're getting a scoop, Frank, and I'm, I'm already uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the scoop. Um, when we decided, okay, it's going to be this, and we're going to go into my studio and do the proof of concept shows, I was very nervous. Mm. Number one, because again, I I need to shake off the rust. Kind of still do, but you know, it'd been years since I've done anything like this. Um, but also, I had spent so much time with him and these incredible guys in the diners club, and they're so smart and they're so articulate. I mean, I mean, Trey is i mean he's a professor at usc he teaches sorry like, frank it's okay yeah i know I can overlook the LA. things. <laughs> he's a professor at usc and he one of the things he does is teach the art of pitching pitching an idea oh. for a tv or a movie show and so this guy he could talk about a like i said he could talk about a toaster and and keep you on the the edge of your seat i mean talk about a toaster <laughs> no. All right. You're not. You're, unless you're going to pay my day rate, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but he, so I was. I was honestly um, leery uh, about that because on our show uh, we had our thing and we did it and hopefully it was the comedy, a smart comedy. But you know it wasn't like wow. You know. So I was nervous about keeping up. Mm. You know. 
Mm. And so basically, I think uh, as my partner, he has to dummy down a little bit, but I appreciate that. Couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> let me let me share something that's percolating, mm. and I uh, I'm not going to start crying, but yes, uh, will. then I will. It's, it's 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 so prominent in my spirit, and I have to say it. Mm. Just sitting here with you guys for 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and it goes something like this. I just pray I can articulate it. So it starts out in my head like a thanks to you, Trey. Uh, that um, this guy who I love, we've been in the wars, on the air for years. Uh, in the aftermath of that, we've stayed in touch. And one of the many things I love about Brian, yeah. he has a spirit in him th that... Uh, he, he just embraces life and, and lives it to its fullest. 100%. And the other part about that is, it's not that he's restless, mm -hmm. but there's a part in Brian where he wants to keep growing. He wants to keep uh, uh, sharing his gifts. Mm -hmm. And so I've watched all these years. We've interacted. We went to lunch a couple times. There was a part of him I could tell man, I, I just, I don't know if I want to do this again. I kind of do, I don't. And he's wrestled with it. So I just know it's undeniable that here you are, the Diners Club began, and now here we are six plus years later, Be Good Humans podcast is going to be a reality. Just thank you because there are so many of us have hoped yeah. And I get hit all the time. Yeah. You know, do you talk to Brian? What's he doing? Is he going to do something? We just, we miss him. We miss that, that spirit and that voice. I was right so. there with you. A hundred percent. So selfishly, as as a loyal listener, I wanted him back too. Yeah. Uh, but it's it is this is that transitional phase that I I sensed or felt you were in, which was like, oh, you you you, you don't ever have to do anything else again. You've accomplished more than most right. people could ever dream of accomplishing. And I know because I was one of those people who had more than a few bad days uh, when I first got here, and yet some. Somehow, man, uh, over a few hours of listening to you in the morning, like, ah, oh, okay, things aren't so bad. I still have things to laugh about. So y you accomplished more than most people will ever dream of doing in their lifetime, but that doesn't mean there isn't still more to accomplish, yep. right? And it also, I mean, again, as, as Frank is eloquently and emotionally speaking to, you, <laughs> there are many of us who have long loved you, but who also had this sense that like, oh, but there's something else. There's something else. You've got more to do. So, yeah, I'm, I'm deeply proud and, and feel and, privileged to be a part of that. And in addition to that, it's so needed right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my 100%. God. Yeah. The way the world is. Yeah. Yeah. So needed right now. People so I'm really that. excited. I'm really yeah, excited. Thank you. Well, that that was also a, a wonderful thing. Uh, we did the proof of concept episodes, and his uh, he's got three beautiful kids, mm -hmm. uh, like you, a super dad, like super dad, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> um, and his daughter now, who's very successful, uh, she's twenty six six years old. She, he sent her uh the link to these these practice shows and again these were really raw really just bad mics we just we just <laughs> was doing what we're doing and she said well you say it because you said your daughter has well, never she's really probably been. i mean all three of my kids are amazing people uh but my daughter you know works in marketing at cbs and is in the business only one of my kids in the business and she's very discerning and a tough critic Right, so and she's, she's uninterested in basically everything you do. You said, yeah. Generally speaking, <laughs> I mean that's how it works, right? So generally speaking, I, I was all I could do to get her to listen to it. But then she called and was like, "Oh my God, I cried! Wow, I cried in the car listening to this." And and it really well, because she's you know Gen X, and I like yeah. what really? Yeah. Well, okay then. Yeah. You know, it, she said you're doing something special. Yeah, she said the world, like you said, the world might need this yeah. you know so and it does for sure brian phelps trey calloway be good humans podcast
soon. I almost want to say soon to a theater near, near yeah. you. <laughs> you know, today, we did uh, two episodes today, uh, two episodes last week, and we're just now banking them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, the, the launch date is June 14th. Mm-hmm. Um, but today, uh, we, we're going to take a break, and I almost said, don't go anywhere, 95.5, Kayla West. <laughs> I came this close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy, I know that one. When I was on the air Recently, afternoons on 99.5 KKLA. Oh, too close. Oh, there was a time or two. Oh, I dropped the 95.5 KLOS. Close. Not the same thing. Uh, listen, I mean, this is where I'm going to geek out for a moment on you guys just because of what you both have accomplished in Los Angeles, in Southern California, in radio, which is like, I grew up in Tulsa. My first favorite radio station first time i realized what radio was was a station called 97 kakc okay what i didn't know because i didn't know la radio history or radio history in general yet was that tulsa was selected in the 70s as the first mid-sized market where they would experiment with the wildly successful radio programming concept of boss radio wow oh wow so what started here in la is 93 khj that's right um then got exported to new york and philadelphia and wls in chicago and san francisco and all the big markets and was equally successful there and so then they were like you know what let's try it in a podunk town like Tulsa and I didn't know it but I would listen to this station and it was way too cool for my hometown but it was the same boss radio concept right the tight playlist and the personality driven jocks and then they had the Grammy award winning Johnny Man singers singing the 97 K A K C, and it was just like incredible so I fell in love with radio from an early 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 time and then couldn't wait to sort of get out here where it was born essentially where 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 that sound that I identified with really came from and then I worked for a while at an ad agency one of the umpteen jobs I had to pay off USC and um and I got to produce radio commercials and I worked with the who's who of LA voiceover talent. It's, it's Don LaFontaine and Ernie yeah. Anderson and Gary Owens and June Foray and Thurl Ravenscroft, who I actually got to be Tony the Tiger and tell me I was great. Like, <laughs> just like this incredible series of experiences, but I've always been so enamored with LA radio and the voiceover talent pool that is here and the professionalism. And so, yeah, I mean, of course I fell in love with you on the radio first, but you guys have both been an extraordinary part of this small, powerful universe of talent that I am just delighted to be able to slip into any version. Of. Trey has always been, uh, I've got to know this about him uh, over the years, but he, but he's been from a very young uh, age, a, uh, a closet, DJ. Uh, yeah. In fact, I, I was a graveyard jock at 74 KRMG. <laughs> See, the I, voice I comes out a little there bit, doesn't it? Is. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> um, but uh, to the point where he does this once a year, basically, I think it's cathartic for him. It's, it's yeah. therapeutic, uh, but he does Tradio. He records uh, a compilation of my favorite songs of the year. And this is a great little story because I'll never be able to tell this anywhere else, right? <laughs> so I was, a, I was a writer and producer on CSI New York for six years and 130 episodes. And uh, this was when I was launching Tradio. And at first it was just like I'm literally making mixtapes for people and sending them out to people in the business. And then it became CDs and then it became a podcast and it was the whole thing. But people would often say, well, it's such a great name, Tradio, you need to have jingles. And I would say, well, I would only have jingles if I could have Johnny Mann jingles. And nobody knew what I meant, and they would laugh politely, and that was it. But I had an assistant at the time who was paying attention. And so one day, in the middle of nothing, or everything, apropos of nothing, he comes in, he sets down a post-it note on my desk. I say, what's this? He says, that's Johnny Mann's email. I said... Johnny Mann is still alive? He said, yeah, he's retired. He lives in North Carolina with his wife. And uh, this is the email. So I go right into my office and I type this love letter to a man I've never met. I, dear Johnny Mann, you know, I was a kid on the swing set with my transistor radio. I'm listening to 97 KKC and your jingles. And I've since learned all about boss radio and how you were the person who created all. I mean, you could still hear him on K Earth to this day, all that stuff. So I, I just send this thing and I say, thank you for being such an important part of my love for radio and send it off. Hit that. A couple days later, assistant comes in. Johnny Mann's on the phone. 
Oh boy. <laughs> I get on the phone, M Mr. Man. Oh, don't you call me Mr. If you're going to send me a love lighter like that, you call me Johnny. Wow. So it starts, it strikes up this friendship. We correspond back and forth. We call, he would call, he said, my wife, Betty and I never miss an episode of CSI New York. It's our favorite show. Uh, tell me more about this episode or that, blah, blah, blah. We become friends. At the end of this first call, though, he says, you know, you've been so kind. You send this letter. What, what can I possibly do for you? I said, you already did it. You already did it. That this, I, I, yeah. what I said to you in the first place. He said, no, there's got to be something. I said, well, you know, I'm joking. I said, I don't even know if you know what a podcast is. Of course I know what a podcast is. I said, well, I do this annual compilation of songs. It's called Tradio. And people always say I should have jingles. But I always say, well, I wouldn't have jingles unless they could be Johnny Man jingles. And he kind of politely laughs. And he says, well, you know, I'm retired. But every once in a while, maybe people, station groups will call me. And if I can ever get the singers together and justify the expense and time, you know, so maybe at some point I'll try and piggyback you into a session. If I ever have another session, I said, great, forget all about it. Six months later, he calls me up. He says, Hey, guess what? The Filipino station group wants to hire me. I've already put together 11 singers. We're going to be in Ricky Skaggs studio in Nashville. So I thought maybe I could uh, do some jingles for you. Now I begin to panic. Sure. I can't afford Johnny man jingles. I don't even know what that. <laughs> so, uh, so I say, Oh John, that's so kind of you. I, you know, I, I can't, I couldn't pot. I'm sure I couldn't afford it. And I'm And he says, well, how about if I give you the 93 KHJ price? I said, well, what was that? He said, how about $750? I'll do some jingles for you. I'll do a full package for you because you've been so... And I was like, ah. Uh. So to this day, and I was his last session. Wow. So to this day, I have these Johnny Man jingles for Tradio, which I'm telling you, if you have a bad day, you guys are on radio, so you've had I've this experience. But man, like, if you're having a bad day, like to hear Amazing. 11 singers sing your name. Yeah. It's the greatest gift I've ever been given. In his style. And he was such a sweetheart. Such yeah, a sweetheart. He passed away. so guilty that you killed him. I, I did. Yeah. yeah, my session <laughs> killed him. Just really. <laughs> wow. His yeah. last session. I hadn't thought of it like that, but now wow. I can never listen to them must again. Oh. Heartbreaking. That's hurtful. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Brian Phelps, Trey Calloway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My mind went to uh, growing up. In Cleveland, we came out here in the 60s. KHJ was like one of the first I listened to, a little transistor on yeah. the pillow. Sure. Then listening to Dodger baseball with Vince Scully sure. or Hearn with the Lakers. But radio was uh, uh, like a long lost friend to me. Here's something you may or may not know. Uh, Brian, I've shared the story with Brian. When I felt, and it's interesting because Brian and I, both our backgrounds, it's not like he wanted to be in radio. I, I had no aspirations. No aspirations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be a racehorse jockey. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. And you know, be a little tall for that, but I, yeah. I grew. <laughs> Clydesdale, maybe. That's right. And so uh, radio just kind of... I see you in the outfit. I'm just trying <laughs> to picture on. that. With the silks Whip. and the... Yeah. And the silks yeah. and the hats. Boots. <laughs> the boots. So uh, when KLOS opened up to me, I interned under a, a guy that did a talk show on Sunday nights. Mm. And the first time I went into an air studio, it's like, oh, wow. It was 1 o'clock in the morning. The board's blinking. Yeah. It's, yeah. The, the speakers are booming. And I was just like, oh, this is, I can do this. Sure you can. No background. <laughs> but when I got offered doing the talk show at KLOS, yeah. uh, the first year I did it, it was caller after caller because the guy I took over the show for was an institution uh -huh. and i got nothing but you're not him oh, yeah where's michael yeah i hate you oh yeah so i learned in the first year school of hard knocks yeah but the point of the story is uh everything that opened up i subscribed to the school of well sure i've done that hey have you ever dj'd yeah, I was DJ'd <laughs> yeah. in, in college, mm -hmm. and you learn from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. I've always said this, and you've heard me say it, uh, that um, I have never, and I've had many, many jobs from painting the lines on the road. <laughs> I had to, I put myself through college, so I had to have all these jobs, yeah. uh, to castrating pigs, to working on farms. I did, I, I did so many jobs, and I have never been hired, and this includes being on the radio. Uh, I've never been hired for anything that I'm, I've been qualified for. I just... I, I just wasn't. You just learn by doing. That's right. You know? That's right. And, and you just kind of, you make it work. Yeah. And that's where you were. That's, that's fantastic. So I was DJing Saturday, Sunday night, midnight to six. Mm -hmm. Not even having any idea what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, news director, sports director. And then, and I'll, I'll put a bow on it. So I'd been doing news and the guys come to town. Yeah. <laughs> 
And at the very earliest part of their on-air stint, I want to say it was the first week or the first couple weeks, um, Chuck, our regular news guy, was on vacation, and they go, hey, will you fill in? Mm -hmm. And I was a little intimidated sure. because not that I was versed in doing the news, but there was quite a buzz around the guys yeah. coming to town. Yeah. And so the story I always tell, we told it on the last podcast. I'm sure you know the story. I'm literally two days in, and I'm just trying to, as your expression, just kind of keeping up. Yeah. And the studio door opens. I'm on the air reading script, and I see a hand come <laughs> and a cigarette lighter. <laughs> And there goes my script, That's cool. and it's on fire, <laughs> and no giggles in the background. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just trying to stay mm -hmm. locked in. Mm -hmm. I just wanted you to relax. Yeah. I, I really, really did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, you were willing to burn the station down to <laughs> yeah, make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Because that had been fun. But, uh, and I'm kind of like passing that along to our crew now yeah. on our podcast. Like, if... I don't want you to be completely silent. I want you to, if we're doing something, you have it, something to add, throw it in there. So, you know, and don't tell, like if you're an engineer, I, like I told Dave today, you're an engineer who I, who I adore. Um, I, I said, Dave, you know me on a microphone. You heard me last time. I'm just sort of back and forth. And I, I you know, jolt into something really loud in a time or two. Don't like look at me and try to get my attention. Scream it out. Yeah. Brian, back off the mic. Because yeah. it adds. And also, Dave, put your shirt back on. <laughs> yes. <right. laughs> We're uncomfortable. <laughs> but it adds a community. It yeah, adds, yeah, it yeah. takes it out of a kind of a dry feeling to to a whole other world, mm -hmm, you know, and mm -hmm. breaking that fourth wall. I, I just adore that. Yeah. And there is a magic behind a microphone mm -hmm. and a blank slate mm -hmm. yeah. and impacting people. Yeah. You know, God rest his soul, Jim Ladd, who was oh. a buddy. Oh, I mean, me too. His whole gift was his ability to just speak to the audience as if he's talking to me yeah. and only me. Yeah. And he was a rare quality. True. It is a rare quality. And, and I got to tell you, he was a genius at it. That was, that was his thing. I felt like he was talking to me. But you know who else on the air? Well, first of all, you uh, with your show. Uh, the Impact Show, but Rita Wilde did it too. Oh, uh, yeah. The her. wonderful, oh, I still love her. The wonderful Rita Wilde. Uh, the pleasure. I, I, I'm, I'll introduce you sometime. Mm -hmm. She's she's amazing, and she's so sweet, and, and we're as uh, uh, still as close as we were. But she had that ability. It was the first time I'd ever listened to the radio. It wasn't Larry Lujak, you know, like, hey, everybody. It was, that was um, Led Zeppelin, and uh, and she would tell a story, and it's like, I was actually responding to it. Uh, I found myself like they they moved uh, they performed in Cleveland, and I went, "Yeah, this is me in the car." Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, like you would a, a regular conversation. Yeah. That she had that talent too. So man, KLOS had Bob Coburn. Uh, oh yeah, loved him. Too. Oh geez, yeah. he was such a amazing Steve Downs. Amazing guy. I reached out to after Lad died. He's yeah. I think he's in Chicago now, back where he was. I saw him at I saw him at uh, Bob Coburn's funeral. He yeah. looks the same. He looks so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were uh, we were brought up at a very interesting time on KLOS. Well, when uh, we first started at KLOS, uh, of course, we did mornings and Steve Downs did, did evenings. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop by the station on the way to uh, my date. She wanted to see the the, the studio, so or the, the the whole set. And uh, so I, I walked in, just me alone, into the studio. Steve uh, is doing a, a a thing. He's he's talking in the mic, and. Then he, just as I'm walking in, he's taking off his headphones, playing a commercial. And I walk in, and we joke about being shirtless. Yeah, yeah. Steve Downs <laughs> was shirtless. Wow. Worked up a sweat in the studio, huh? Yeah, he, he had, like, jeans on, and, and he was yeah. just shirtless. Well, that pulling he, carts was, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of arduous work. <laughs> but he had a bandana. And it wasn't, like, showing off my muscles. I yeah, have to. Yeah. Like that. It was just, uh, he was kind of this <clears throat> bohemian kind yeah, of attitude. Yeah, and, yeah. and he had incense and just yep. all this stuff to put him in the mood. Yeah. And that was what you felt. Yeah. You know, uh, when you listen to him, he, he's such a great guy too. I, I mean, I, I was honored to be around you guys. I, I just absolutely honored, especially I came from Top Forty Radio, as I think you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm in, you know, the home of album rock. Uh, that was that 
for years before I got there, yeah. and I and I I know maybe one Pink Floyd song at that moment, you know, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I just see the passion, the passion that you yep. all had. Yep. You know, they amazing. they they definitely were cut out of a different jib. A lot of the on air hosts, yeah, and yeah. and so now we blink our eyes. 2012 was the last broadcast. Here we are, 12 years later, and um, I'm going to be redundant, but there is there's a vacuum and a, a hole by which culture really has has uh, taken a step back because there's something that's been lost. Mm -hmm. And my prayer, whatever comes out of the Be Good Humans podcast, I have my ideas, mm -hmm. I'll be quiet, because I know you're starting slow and building up, but... Uh, Man, um, I, I just, I can't wait. I'll be your biggest fan. I can't wait to just experience it uh, and, and the new season and what's to come. And I know you have to be um, a, a deep diver because Brian, oh, yeah. uh, I, I was with the guy five days a week and just grinding and wanting to get it right. And, and it's so rare. Yeah. I mean, I love comedy. Yeah. And I'm not going to name names, but there's some comedians that have really made it. And you watch and you're like, okay, that's the same thing you've talked about for a few years. Yeah, a few yeah. years they mail it in versus like the era of George Carlin where he just yeah. worked it and worked it and worked it and wanted it to be the best it could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no question. And and I think, you know, we said before we before we started uh, taping with you today <laughs> in the digital realm. What is the correct um, response? I don't know anymore. Let's just not even pretend like it matters. Digitally, okay, uh, taping. But before we rolled, uh, you know, I mentioned like my youngest son, Cosmo, has got his own, and he's Gen Z as they come, but he's got his own radio show uh, in Boston on the campus radio station at Tufts. But he worked out here in LA for KCRW, the local one of the local NPR stations, and he just had this Gen Z, un, a very non-Gen Z epiphany about radio and how it it builds community on a local level. And I think even though radio has changed in a myriad of ways since you guys were on KLOS, I don't think the need has gone away. Yeah for Said. what you guys managed to cultivate in an audience. And so, like, hopefully we can get it some version of that ourselves with Be Good Humans. How can the viewers and the listeners find you guys? Uh, well, that's an excellent question. They could start by going to our website, which is BeGoodHumansPodcast.com. Uh, that will also have links to all of our socials and our uh, Patreon. Uh, and then uh, the podcast, when it launches on June 14th, will be available wherever you get your podcasts. Well, I'm going to speak for a lot of people. Long time in coming. We're excited. I'm excited. And we can't wait to uh, watch it grow and, and breathe and, and both of your talents and gifts and uh, pour it into this potpourri and, and uh, see what happens here. We'll do our best not that. to let you down, Frank. <laughs> Brian Phelps, Trey Calloway. Be Good Humans Podcast. BeGoodHumansPodcast.com is the website. Yeah. All right. All right. God bless you both. Until next time, we are grateful. Thank you for watching this, the Frank Sontag Podcast.